Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Beautiful a, boulder. A couple, Beautiful couple, boulder. Couple, couple of years yeah. back. You know? So, uh, yeah, and, um, you know, and artists are people who um, are inevitably going to be campaigning for uh, for peace mm-hmm. and against war. It's artists for, are for creation. Mm-hmm. Not, not destruction. destruction. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, the arms trade is sadly doing very well um, these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have a favourite piece of work? Of your own work? That's a favourite or... I think maybe the um, the one I've just been talking about, the kilt. Kilt. Um, mm-hmm. About the, um, the Scottish guy and the Czech girl mm-hmm. in... In Prague, um, again, I think that'd be partly for the reasons that um, I've been saying that um, you bring out the tragic and the and also the funny side of mm-hmm. um, when human beings interact. But they mm-hmm. come from very, 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 very different backgrounds mm-hmm. from countries with very, very different histories, and very different, very different cultures, you know, and the the misunderstandings, but also, um, you know, the lovely friendships yeah. and uh, romantic or otherwise uh-huh. that, can, that, 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 that can come from uh-huh. come from that, you know. So it's, um, you know, I'm not just um, not just satirising, yeah. you know, I'm celebrating as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you had access to infinite funding for the arts, what would you do with that? Ooh, well, it wouldn't just be up to me. <laughs> um, what if I personally had... had mm-hmm. that, if you'd had access to any funding, is there any particular project you'd help, any initiative you'd support? Oh, gosh, where would I start? Um, one thing, um, and this would not necessarily be exclusive of, of other things I would want to be involved in, would be with more translation, mm-hmm. more, um, especially in Scotland, of um, work from overseas mm-hmm. into English, Scots, mm-hmm. Gaelic. Um, a lot of that is, is happening already, in, you know, and as you know, I've, I've, I've been involved in mm-hmm. that. When I worked in Ireland, uh, I felt that it was a much bigger scale there. Mm-hmm. In many ways, Ireland has become a much more European country, mm-hmm. much more internationally minded than, mm. uh, than Scotland is. Um, but you know we made great progress mm-hmm. um, in internationalising our culture and recognising the international context of our own culture and mm-hmm. that reciprocity I was talking about we made, made great strides in recent mm-hmm. decades but there's still an awful long way to go mm-hmm. one of the things I noticed when I was in France that if you went into a bookshop there there would be shelves and shelves of stuff from other languages translated uh-huh. into French Wow. Yeah, you know, you would see um, like whole sh- shelves of literature, Polonaise, mm-hmm. Polish literature, literature, Hongroise, Hungarian, Portuguese, da 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 mm-hmm. da. Uh, all that, all these wonderful books uh, translated um, from these languages for uh, for French readers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just don't have that equivalent here. I mm-hmm. mean, you go into bookshops, um, the chains. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just don't, you, you won't see a whole section of, uh, no. of translated you know, no. literature. And uh, that was something I've missed coming from France. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, being able to read mm-hmm. uh, in French. Um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I've not got a natural aptitude mm-hmm. for languages. I, I want to emphasise that. Uh, and, you know, I've often worked with people who uh, who do have that or, mm-hmm. or, or, need, or need, need, native speakers and I, mean, I have to work at it mm-hmm. languages but um, you know I, I can read with a certain fluency mm-hmm. in, in French so this has meant that it's, the French language has acted as a gateway uh-huh. to me not just to, to French literature but to other literatures as well Same, simply uh-huh. because of um, of what's been translated I've got books on these shelves there that just have been translated into English at all so I've had to go to the um to the original the, 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 French, the French translations. So it's almost like it's like a gateway to another worldwide library. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, I would like Scotland to be very much part of that that movement, mm-hmm. that movement, if you like. You know, um, again, you know, in in the past, Scotland has been like that. Mm-hmm. 
um, you know, we did have that alliance with France, which mm-hmm. was a cultural one, not not just a political mm-hmm. and dynastic one. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's reflected in 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 their language. You know, mm-hmm. when you talk about an ashet, uh, as yet, you know, mm-hmm. a jigot of lamb, yeah. jigot, you know, mm-hmm. it's often cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, yeah. Um, I, I would like to see us do doing doing more on that. From, mm-hmm. I think this is maybe partly the teacher in me, you know, because mm-hmm. I was teaching literature. So I've got this kind of pedagogic, mm-hmm. uh, maybe even pedantic, uh, desire to uh, to enable people in Scotland to mm-hmm. have access um, mm-hmm. to the literatures and cultures of, of other countries, mm-hmm. and to you know be able to enjoy that together mm. you know with our own cultures here mm-hmm. here in scotland uh, without any sense of one being superior to the yeah to the one other. not being exclusive to the other because yeah. it's, it's all mm-hmm. it's all the same mm-hmm. um speaking of scotland mm. if i was to ask you one word to describe scotland's future what would it be well um i'm strongly in favor of scottish independence um i would like us to be a republic um, maybe we could spend our, spend the money on things that are really really important. Mm-hmm. Education, obviously. <laughs> um, Education. Health provision. Mm-hmm. Culture, uh, rather than on on um, weapons of mass destruction like Trident. Yeah. Uh, you know which which is based here in here in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Sadly, abominably. Um, a Scotland based on what I would say socialist values, not dogmas, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, a socialist ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, in, you know, we've had strong communities in Scotland, and you know, still in Scotland, that there is a there is a community spirit, uh, you know, and we don't have to go down uh, the same road as um, south of the border. Mm-hmm. You know, we can. Forge your own path. You can offer something better. Mm-hmm. There can be an example. Mm-hmm. Do you have a creative process, or is it you take it as it comes? Well, it's a mixture of taking it as it comes <laughs> and um, you know injecting your own mm-hmm. will mm-hmm. into that into that material. Um, it is interactive. Um, the the poet Coleridge had some wonderful images for the creative process. He he, he wrote about um, a waterfly uh, when it's uh, moving. Um, it will um, move so much mm-hmm. forward, so much back, forward and back, and it's that combination of the forward movement and the backward movement, mm-hmm. um, the contrast, if yeah. you like. Um, and I think that's at the that's at the, that's at the heart of um, the artistic process. Mm-hmm. Um, I prefer to use the word artistic rather than, rather than creative mm-hmm. um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, yeah, it, the, the artistic process it's an it's an interactive one all the mm-hmm. all, all all the way. It's a combination of opposites, the clash mm-hmm. of opposites, that releases the energy mm-hmm. that propels the thing, that yeah. propels the whole damn thing forward. Mm-hmm. Is there any advice you'd offer to any other artists out there that are starting to forge down this road? I would say, um, well, whatever your medium is, even if it's not the written word, Read, 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 read all you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, both you and I have been involved in, in writers' workshops, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, well, I, I taught creative writing um, <clears throat> when I was in the states mostly, mm-hmm. um, and that's great. Um, but there's no substitute for um, students of people attending attending these workshops, there's no substitute for them being readers. Mm-hmm. You cannot be <coughs> uh, an, inter- an interesting writer, I think, uh, if you're not also an interesting reader. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, widening your reading as much as, much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but saying that applies to um, people, in, people in all the arts. You know, we need, 
people need to acquire a culture. They need to be aware of, of what's gone before mm-hmm. uh, so they can get their own work into, into perspective. Mm-hmm. And they can understand that it's accessible to them no matter what their circumstances are. Yeah. Um, also, I think what's important is that um, there's an awful lot of people who um, become creative in, in, in whatever way and uh, they might think that what they are doing is completely original. It's the first time this has ever been done. But if they're not aware mm-hmm. of what's gone before, um, they'll persist in that illusion. Mm-hmm. Um, invariably, it's not the first time you've done it, pal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody's been there before you. Yeah, uh-huh. um, you know, so you, um, you have to be aware of that. But it's mm-hmm. also, I think, it, it's good for their own... Mm-hmm. actually enriches uh, their own art mm-hmm. if they if they can absorb what, what what's going, what's going before, on you know greatly enriches them now speaking of enriching art you're currently working on another project at the moment would you like to tell us about that yeah um it's my forthcoming book which is called the the devil and michael scott um uh-huh. it's something of a gallum offre um a bit, a, mi- a mixture, a mixed bag. Um, the, sub- the, the, the subtitle is A Gallum Offrey for Fife and Beyond. Mm-hmm. The, the title piece, The Devil and Michael Scott, is a play that I wrote about the, the wizard, Michael mm-hmm. Scott, who in, real, who in real life was, uh, was a medieval, medieval scientist mm-hmm. and um, philosopher, you would mm-hmm. say, uh, very much a polymath. Uh, my friend Willie Hershaw is also mm-hmm. interested in uh, Michael Scott, and but we we've, we've, we do work together. Uh-huh. But you know we, we, we've, we've got a different take mm-hmm. on um, on the, the Michael Scott mm-hmm. uh, story, so we're not in competition mm-hmm. with one another. We tend to complement each other. Yeah. Um, and I've actually performed in, um, in in his version of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the centerpiece. So it's drawing on Fife legend and uh, Fife history. Um, literature of Fife, uh, its history. Mm-hmm. Um, so it consists mostly it consists of poetry, um, which follows the Fife coastal path for the most most part from Eubera, uh-huh. right round all the way to to, to King Carton, uh-huh. uh, with poetic observations on the on the way, mm-hmm. um, a few translations into mm-hmm. Russian. Um, they, what, what, you might well wonder mm-hmm. what's the connection between Fife and uh, and Russia. Uh, but it has back to my book Slavonic Dances mm-hmm. it's five people looking east yeah. where, and of course you know, we're on the east coast yeah. of, the eastern part of the country so, so that's we're what we're looking east, at you know. yeah. next stop is Denmark yeah. you know, and then and then beyond you mm-hmm. know Poland, Russia etc um, so uh, but every so often this sequence is interrupted by mm-hmm. prose pieces so there's a short essay on Robert Louis Stevenson mm-hmm. and what he wrote about Fife uh, there's um, a short essay on uh, the American writer Herman Melville, who mm-hmm. wrote Moby Dick, yeah. whose ancestors came from Fife. Uh-huh. Oh. Melville. Oh, yeah. <coughs> mm-hmm. um, <laughs> so, that, so there's that. Uh-huh. There's, um, there's, a, a, there's, a, there's a rather um, quirky piece about Adam Smith, mm-hmm. um, which um, I got the idea for the Adam Smith one when I was taking part in a conference at Glasgow University. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and I was walking up the big stair there and... Uh, there's a a more than life size statue of Adam Smith, who was mm-hmm. a professor at the university, yeah. and um, he's got his hands stretched out mm-hmm. uh, as if he was con- t- conducting an orchestra. Uh-huh. And I thought, what if Mozart had lived beyond the age of thirty, thirty nine, whatever mm-hmm. it was, uh, and had lived as long as Adam Smith uh-huh. into middle age? Uh, that's what Mozart might have looked like. Yeah. So I thought of Adam Smith; he's almost conducting a conducting a symphony. Yeah. You know, so, and uh, and I came across a passage mm-hmm. in uh, one of Adam Smith's books mm-hmm. where he's talking about how um, the the pleasure that we get um, from a system of thought, mm-hmm. you know, a philosophical system, and the way that it's put together, it's intellectually put together, mm-hmm. and ingeniously, and we follow the ideas, mm-hmm. you know, and we get a pleasure from that. He compares it to the pleasure that we get from a piece of music. Mm-hmm. More, uh, you know, the more complex yeah. the piece of music, the better. Yeah, uh-huh. it's a challenge. You know, yeah. to, you know, to um, intellectualize that and yeah, get into grips, that. get into grips with the philosophical system. It teases our brains. Yeah, uh, get into grips with a piece of music. Teases our ears. Mm-hmm. Teases our brains as well. So he makes that comparison. So I thought, well, we'll call this little piece Adam Smith's 
Sympathy Symphony because he mm. wrote uh, he wrote a book about 